When deploying your smart contracts on chain, we all know that those smart contracts are immutable or unchangeable. But what if I told you that they were mutable? <laughs> well, technically I wouldn't be correct. However, smart contracts actually can change all the time. When people transfer tokens, when people stake in a contract or really do any type of functionality, those smart contracts have to update their balances and update their mappings and update their variables to reflect this. The reason that they're immutable is that the logic itself never changes and will be on chain like that forever. So technically, yes, once they are deployed, they are immutable. And this is actually one of the major benefits of smart contracts in the first place, that nobody can tamper with or screw with our smart contracts once we deploy them. However, this can be an issue if, for example, we want to upgrade our smart contract or protocol to do more things, or we want to fix some glaring bug or issue that we have. Now, even though we can't change the specific code that's been deployed to an address, we can actually do a lot more than you think. And in this video, we're going to explain the different methodologies behind upgrading your smart contracts, and then we're gonna show you how to do it with Hardhat and Open Zeppelin. Huge shout out to a lot of Open Zeppelin and Trail of Bits articles that helped me put this video together, uh, and a number of other sources as well, links in the description. So let's get to it. Now, at first glance, you might be thinking, rum, 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 rum. if you can upgrade your smart contracts, then they're not really immutable then. Rum, 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 rum. And in a way, you'd be right. So when explaining kind of the different philosophies and patterns that we can use here, we do need to keep in mind the philosophies and decentralization implications that each one of these patterns have, as they do all have different advantages and disadvantages. And yes, some of the disadvantages here are going to affect decentrality. So we need to keep that in mind. And this is why it's so important that before you go ahead and jump in and start deploying upgradable smart contracts, you understand the trade-offs. We're gonna look at three different ways to upgrade your smart contracts. The not really upgrading method, the social yeet, aka migrating method, and then the method that you're probably here for, which is proxies. So let's talk about the not really upgrading method or the parameterization method or whatever you wanna call it. This is the simplest way to think about upgrading your smart contracts. And it really isn't upgrading our smart contracts because we can't really change the logic of the smart contract. Whatever logic that we've written is there. We also can't add new storage or state variables. So this is really not really upgrading, but it is something to think about. Upgrades is just parameterizing everything. Whatever logic that we've deployed is there, and that's what we're interacting with. This function means we just have a whole bunch of setter functions and we can update certain parameters. Like maybe we have a reward parameter that gives out a token at 1% every year or something like that. Maybe we have a setter function that says, hey, update that to 2% or update that to 4%. It's just a setter function that changes some variable. Now the advantages here are obviously this is really simple to implement. The disadvantage is that if you didn't think of some logic or some functionality the first time you deployed their smart contract, that's too bad. You're stuck with it. You can't update the logic or really update anything uh, with the parameterization, aka not really method. And the other thing you have to think about is who the admins are. Who has access to these setter functions, to these updating functions? If it's a single person, Guess what? You have a centralized smart contract. Now, of course, you can add a governance contract to be the admin contract of your protocol, and that would be a decentralized way of doing this. So just keep that in mind. You can do this method, just need a governance protocol to do so. Another example of this might be a contract registry, and this is something actually that early versions of Aave used. Before you call a function, you actually check some contract registry that is updated as a parameter by somebody, and you get routed to that contract and you do your call there. Again, this really doesn't allow us to have the full functionality of upgrades here. You can argue that this registry is a mix of one of the later versions, but for all intents and purposes, this doesn't really give us that flexibility that we want for our upgrades. But some people might even think that upgrading your smart contract is ruining the decentrality. And one of the things that makes smart contracts so potent is that they are immutable and that this is one of the benefits that they have. So there are some people who think that you shouldn't add any customization or any upgradability. You should deploy your contract and then that's it. Trillabits has actually argued that if you deploy your contract knowing that it can't be changed later, you take a little bit extra time making sure you get everything right and there are often less security vulnerabilities because you're just setting it, forgetting it, and not looking at it again. Now, if I were to deploy a smart contract and I wanted to upgrade it with this philosophy in mind that, hey, we gotta keep it immutable, we could use the social yeet method to actually upgrade to new versions. The social yeet method, or the migration method, is just when you deploy your new contract not connected to the old contract in any way, and by social convention, you tell everybody, hey, hey, this new contract, this new one that we just deployed, yeah, this is the real one now. And it's just by convention of people migrating and over and to using this new one that the upgrade is done. Hence my slang name of social yeet, because you yeet the first one out of the way and you move to the second one. 
I think I'm funny. Yay! This has the advantage of truly always saying, hey, this is our immutable smart contract, and this is our new one. This is really the truest definition of immutable, because since you give it no way of being upgraded in place, then if somebody calls that contract in 50,000 years in the future, it'll respond exactly the same. Another huge disadvantage here is that you have to have a totally new contract address. So if you're an ERC-20 token, for example, you have to go convince all the exchanges to list your new contract address as the actual address. Keep in mind that when we do this, we do have to move the state of the first one over to the second one. So for example, if you're an ERC token moving to a new version of that ERC token, you do have to have a way to take all those mappings from the first contract and move it to the second one. Obviously, there are ways to do this since everything is on chain, but if you have a million transfer calls, I don't wanna have to write the script that updates everyone's balance and figures out what everyone's balance is just so I can migrate to my new version of the contract. So there is a ton of social convention work here to do. Trail of Bits has actually written a fantastic blog on upgrading from a V1 to a V2 or et cetera with this Yeet methodology. And they give a lot of steps for moving your storage and your state variables over to the new contract. So link in the description if you wanna read that. Now let's get to our big ticket item. So in order to have a really robust upgrading mentality or philosophy, we need to have some type of methodology or framework that can update our state, keep our contract address, and allow us to update any type of logic in our smart contracts in an easy way. Which leads us to our big ticket item, the proxies. What's our big ticket item? Proxies. It's people. Proxies. Proxies are the truest form of upgrades. Since a user can keep interacting with the protocols through these proxies and not even notice that anything changed or even got updated. Now these are also the places where you can screw up the easiest. Proxies use a lot of low level functionality and the main one being the delegate call functionality. Delegate call is a low level function where the code in the target contract is executed in the context of the calling contract and message.sender and message.value also don't change. So you understand what delegate call means now, right? Great. And in English, this means if I delegate call a function in contract B from contract A, I will do contract B's logic in contract A. So if contract B has a function that says, hey, store this value in a variable up top, I'm going to store that variable in contract A. This is the powerhouse, and this combined with the fallback function allows us to delegate all calls through a proxy contract address to some other contract. This means that I can have one proxy contract that will have the same address forever, and I can just point and route people to the correct implementation contract that has the logic. Whenever I want to upgrade, I just deploy a new implementation contract and point my proxy to that new implementation. Now, whenever a user calls a function on the proxy contract, I'm going to delegate call it to the new contract. I can just call an admin only function on my proxy contract. Let's call it upgrade or something. And I make all the contract calls go to this new contract. When we're talking about proxies, there are four pieces of terminology that we wanna keep in mind. First is the implementation contract. The implementation contract has all of our logic and all the pieces of our protocol. Whenever we upgrade, we actually launch a brand new implementation contract, the proxy contract. Proxy points to which implementation is the correct one and routes everyone's calls to the correct implementation contract. You can think the proxy contract sits on top of the implementations. The user. The user is gonna be making contract and function calls through the proxy contract. And then some type of admin. The admin is the one who's gonna decide when to upgrade and which contract to point to. In this scenario, the other cool thing about the proxy and delegate call is that all my storage variables are gonna be stored in the proxy contract and not in the implementation contract. This way, when I upgrade to a new logic contract, all of my data will stay on the proxy contract. So whenever I wanna update my logic, just point to a new implementation contract. If I wanna add a new storage variable or a new type of storage, I just add it in my logic contract and the proxy contract will pick it up. Now using proxies has a couple of gotchas and we're gonna talk about the gotchas and then we're gonna talk about the different proxy contract methodologies because yes, there are many proxy contract methodologies as well. And this is why Trillibits doesn't really recommend using upgradable proxies for your smart contracts because they're fraught with a lot of these potential issues. Not to mention, again, you do still have some type of admin who's gonna be upgrading your smart contracts. Now, if this is a governance protocol, then great, you're decentralized. But if this is a single group or entity, then we have a problem. The two biggest gotchas are storage clashes and function selector clashes. Now, what does this mean? 
When we use delegate call, remember, we do the logic of contract B inside contract A. So if contract B says we need to set value to two, we go ahead and set value to two. But these smart contracts are actually kind of dumb. We actually set the value of whatever is in the same store's location on contract A as contract B. So if our contract looks like this and we have two variables in contract A, we're still gonna set the first storage spot on contract A to the new value. This is really important to know because this means we can only append new storage variables in new implementation contracts and we can't reorder or change old ones. This is called storage clashing. And in the implementations we're gonna talk about, they all address this issue. The next one is called function selector clashes. When we tell our proxies to delegate call to one of these implementations, it uses what's called a function selector to find a function. The function selector is a four byte hash of the function name and the function signature. Don't worry about the function signature for now. Now it's possible that a function in the implementation contract has the same function selector as an admin function in the proxy contract, which may cause you to do accidentally a whole bunch of weird stuff. For example, in this sample code in front of you, even though these functions are totally different, they actually have the same function selector. So yes, we can run into an issue where some harmless function like get price has the same function selector as upgrade proxy or destroy proxy or something like that. This leads to our first out of the three implementations of the proxy contracts. This is called the transparent proxy pattern, and this is actually gonna be the pattern that we're gonna be demoing to you today. In this methodology, admins are only allowed to call admin functions, and they can't call any functions in the implementation contract. And users can only call functions in the implementation contract and not any admin contracts. This way, you can't ever accidentally have one of the two swapping and having a function selector clash and you running into a big issue where you call a function you probably shouldn't have. If you're an admin, you're calling admin functions. If you're a user, you're calling implementation functions. So if you're an admin and you build some crazy awesome DeFi protocol, you better come up with a new wallet address because you can't participate. The second type of proxy we're gonna talk about is the universal upgradable proxy or the UPS. This version of upgradable contracts actually puts all the logic of upgrading in the implementation itself. This way, the Solidity compiler will actually kick out and say, hey, we got two functions in here that have the same function selector. This is also advantageous because we have one less read that we have to do. We no longer have to check in the proxy contract if someone is an admin or not. This saves on gas, of course. And the proxy is also a little bit smaller because of this. The issue is that if you deploy an implementation contract without any upgradable functionality, you're stuck. And it's back to the yeet method with you. And the last pattern or methodology that we're gonna talk about is the diamond pattern, which does a number of things. But one of the biggest things that it does, it actually allows for multiple implementation contracts. This addresses a couple different issues. For example, if your contract is so big and it doesn't fit into the one contract maximum size, you can just have multiple contracts through this multi-implementation method. It also allows you to make more granular upgrades. Like, you don't have to always deploy and upgrade your entire smart contract, you can just upgrade little pieces of it if you've chunked them out. The disadvantages here really only seem like you have a lot more complicated code. And you really need to make sure your off-chain tooling is solid so you don't run into some type of function or storage clashing. If you're gonna use this method, you need to be really, really, really good at smart contract development. And you need to understand the implications of your very low level code that you're gonna be working with. All the proxies mentioned here have some type of Ethereum improvement proposal, and most of them are in the draft phase. There isn't really a standard here for the proxy that the whole community has landed on and says, yes, this is great, let's do it. So for all these, be sure to jump on the discussion and give your thoughts. As always, leave the comments in the description, and let's actually look into deploying one of these upgradable proxies using Hardhat and Open Zeppelin. We're using a step-by-step -step tutorial here, so be sure to check out the Open Zeppelin documentation for the most up-to-date version of this tutorial. We're gonna be looking at the transparent proxy pattern here, and we're gonna be deploying to a real chain. Let's jump in. And like always, thanks all for watching. At 10K subs, we're doing a tattoo reveal. So be sure to smash that sub button, hit that like button, share with whoever, jump into the conversation, because again, Everything that we're talking about here is evolving the Ethereum, the Solidity, the smart contract, the blockchain community as a whole. So let's get to it. If you don't already have Hardhat installed, you might want to go to the Hardhat website and just kind of follow the documentation here. The documentation is really stellar and, uh, you know, if you get lost, feel free to jump into the comments below or jump into the Hardhat Discord. Once you have Hardhat installed, though, let's go ahead and create a new Hardhat project with MPX Hardhat. 
We're going to create a sample project and just hit enter a whole bunch here. And now we are going to be following the Open Zeppelin step by step tutorial for hardhead. You can also go to the Open Zeppelin documentation. You can also go to the Open Zeppelin upgrades documentation where they can take you step by step through this as well. Once we have our sample contract, we're going to do yarn add and open Zeppelin slash hard hat upgrades. You can also use NPM. You can check the documentation for that as well. Then we're going to do yarn add Nomic Lab slash hard hat ethers ethers. Now we're going to go to our hard hat config and we're going to add those two packages in right in our hard hat config at the top. And the rest looks good. Now we're just going to delete this one for now. And we're going to create a new contract in here that is going to be upgradable and it's going to be called box.soul. So I'm just going to copy paste some code in here so we can see box.soul. Simple contract, all it really does is it emits a value changed event when we store a new value, uh, which changes the private variable value. And then we also have a getter function, which returns the value uh, by calling this retrieve function here. You can also write tests. We're going to skip the tests for now. However, we probably do want to write box.proxy. However, since we are working with proxies and these are new, we do want to check out and see what a test using proxies looks like. So here's our test here. I copied and pasted from the tutorial. We're, ex we're importing expect from chai. We have two variables, box and box. First, we get our box contract, which is just going to be this contract right here from get contract factory. And then we use this upgrades plugin. Again, that's defined in the hard hat config at the top. Uh, we deploy the proxy with our test. To deploy the proxy with our test, we name the contra uh, the implementation that we want to deploy, which again is box that we've defined right here. We give it the list of arguments that we want it to start with. And if we see in box, we're going to have it start with uh, this, this value being 42. And the initializer is going to be store. So when working with proxies, we actually don't have a constructor function. Now our implementation actually can't have a constructor because if it has a constructor, then all that state will be stored in the implementation. And again, we want all the data stored in the proxy. So we actually say, instead of having a constructor, we're going to have an initializer function. And we see that here in the test we have, we're saying the initializer, we're saying the initializer is the store function. So after we deploy this contract, it's going to call the store function afterwards with 42 being inputted as the new value here. And then this box that is returned, this is actually the proxy contract that is deployed. And in our test, we're going to do expect await box dot retrieve dot to string to equal 42. So on the proxy contract, we're going to call this retrieve function and our delegate call should actually send it to here. So now we can test it with MPX hard hat test. And we can see that we are passing. Awesome. So our proxy should work correctly. You should also test the box contract itself without the proxy too. Um, but again, I'm just showing the proxy for the purpose of this demo. Now we want to deploy. So I'm going to write a new script. We're going to delete this one. And if you use hardhead deploy, you can obviously modify this to work with hardhead deploy, but we're just going to do a new con a new script called deploy.js. And this is going to be an async function main. And let's get into the function. So we're going to do the same thing as our test here. We do const box equals await ethers dot get contract factory box, right? Oops, box. Now we're going to just do console dot log deploying proxy box implementation and proxy admin. And then we're going to do const box proxy equals await upgrades upgrades dot deploy proxy box again those initial arguments and then initializer store. So what this deploy proxy function is going to do in this upgrades package that we've imported, 
my VS Code was being a little aggressive because because uh, actually these are actually pulled in right from the config, so we actually don't even need to name them at the top. This deploy proxy function is going to deploy a proxy contract, a box implementation contract, and then a proxy admin contract, which you can just think is, is another step. It's just an admin contract that uh, de defines how to work with uh, this the proxy contract. Now, it's only going to deploy all three the first time we do that. Uh, but then we're just going to do a console.log box proxy deployed to, and then we'll do box proxy dot address. And then basically we just run it, right? So we're just going to run it, then exit. And if there's an error, we're going to spit out the error. Now we're actually going to deploy this to rinkb. And to do this, we're going to go into our hardhead config. We're going to add some networks down here. We're going to do default network. It's going to be rinkb networks. We're going to start with rinkb. We're going to give it the URL. It's going to be rinkb rpc URL. And then we're going to define that at the top, we're going to do const rinkb rpc URL. It's going to be equal to process.env rinkb rpc url so i have an environment variable called rinkb rpc url and this is just like my infura my uh, alchemy connection to the blockchain on the rinkb and then i'm going to do const private key equals process .env private key and again this is just going to be my private key we can of course add them in a, a dot env variable and then we could load you know, we could use the die env package, but uh, we're just going to skip that for now. So uh, private kitty is going to be there. And then still under rinkb, we're going to do accounts. It's just going to be private key. Oops. Now we're going to do run mpx hardhat run scripts, deploy.js. And we're going to deploy this actually on the rinkb chain. Now remember, your private key is going to be from your MetaMask. Uh, and it's going to have a 0x added to the top. So you could also just swap this out with like 0x, blah, 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 blah. If you're confused about environment variables, you could also do this as, you know, HTTPS, Infura, blah, 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 blah. And great. So box proxy deployed to this contract address. So now we go to Etherscan. We'll drop that contract address in here, and it actually hasn't... Uh, hasn't finished deploying yet, but if we go to my address that I'm using, we can see we've deployed at least two contracts here right now, and we're going to get a third in just a second. And here's the third. So we made three transactions right now. So we deployed this contract, this contract, and this contract. So this first contract here is going to be the box implementation. So we can verify and publish this. This is our box. This is the implementation contract. Then we have our proxy admin contract, right? And so this is the contract that defines how to work with our, our proxy contract. And then we have our, uh, our transparent upgradable proxy. So this is our, our proxy, again, following that transparent uh, upgradable pattern that we talked about previously. So great, so we've deployed these three and they all interact and they're all super happy. Awesome. Now in the Open Zeppelin tutorial, it actually shows you how to use a Gnosis safe with Open Zeppelin. Uh, we're gonna skip that for now and we're just gonna do everything through here, but uh, definitely using a Gnosis safe for a lot of these upgradable stuff is gonna be really, really helpful because it has a multi-signature feature which allows it so that if one person gets compromised, the whole application isn't compromised, but we're gonna move on. So we have this, this box, this, this OG box version now we want to upgrade it to box v2, right? So let's create a new one and we'll call it box v2 .soul. right? And again, the reason that we want to do this is right. Cause if we do, if we make calls to this proxy contract, right? We're going to get the calls that, uh, to this, to this original box. So if I do MPX, excuse me, MPX hardhat console, 
network ring B. And I do const box equals await ethers.get contract factory box. And then I do const box equals await box dot attach uh, in that address and that this proxy address here. And then I do await, actually let's even do await box dot retrieve dot to string. We're going to get 42. So this is the proxy contract, but we're calling the retrieve function from this box here, right? So we're calling the retrieve function from this box from this implementation contract. Awesome. So let's quit this now. And now let's go back to upgrading. So again, so we have this v2 in here, which we've added some new stuff. We added an increment function in here. And let's actually get this going. The Open Zeppelin tutorial does a great transfer ownership uh, piece that we're going to skip, but if you want to transfer your proxy admin, uh, you definitely can test doing that. You also want to test running this upgrade, but again, we're going to skip that for now. Now in the Open Zeppelin guide, again, it's going to show you how to prepare your upgrade. This actually deploys your contract, and then you in the Gnosis Safe UI, you actually upgrade uh, to that deployed new implementation, we're actually just going to call a function called uh, upgrade contract, right, or upgrade, uh, upgrade proxy, we're just going to call uh, right like that. So we're going to actually copy our deploy code, because it's going to be really, really similar to this. So what we're going to do, actually, we're going to delete most of what's in here. Now we're going to do const box v2 equals await ethers.get contract factory box v2 get contract factory. It's so pretty similar so far. And then instead of deploying a proxy, we're just going to do one thing. So we're just going to say let box equals await upgrades dot upgrade proxy. And here's where we're going to grab that address. Again, this is the transparent upgradable proxy address. And you could always also programmatically do this. So upgrades. Oops, sorry, it's pulling it in again. Upgrades dot upgrade proxy. And then we gotta tell it what we want to upgrade it to. So we're saying box v2. Sorry, this is box v2. And we're gonna do console.log. Your upgraded proxy is done. Comma box dot address. Let's go ahead and run it now. Your upgraded proxy is done. Now if we would go back to my recent transactions, we can see I recently called this upgrade function to this new contract, right? And it looks like this, and right before that, we actually deployed this new contract. And this is that box v2. So now if we do hardhat console, MBX hard hat console. And again, it's on the Rigby network because that's our default here. And we do const box v2 equals await ethers.get contract factory box v2. And then we attach. We do const box v2 equals await. Let's go back to that proxy. Not the proxy admin. Yep, this one right here, the actual proxy. We should be able to call await box v2 dot retrieve dot to string. Oops. Forty two. And then we now should be able to call this new function await box v2 dot increment. If we call this retrieve function again, once this other transaction goes through, we now see 43. And that 
is a function only in box v2 and not in box v1. So we have successfully upgraded our contract.